Yo, it's Arrow, and today we're actually going to demo an audio plugin I built. It's kind of in an alpha state, so it would really help me out if you guys went to the description, join the Discord there, and in the download section you can grab a free copy of the VST3. It'll work on anything but uh, Pro Tools, and it won't work on Mac. Right now the build's only for Windows. If I get good feedback from this after I make the edits and make the final build, there will also be a build for Mac OS too. For those curious about how one would go about making an audio plugin like this, there will actually be a code walkthrough video coming up soon. If it's already out, I'm sure I'll leave a link somewhere on the screen or in the description. But let's get on to the demo. So here's the drum loop. We're gonna add our plugin and see what we can do. Right now, I have it set to almost silence. This is actually not a bug, but a feature, although this shouldn't be the initial preset. But let's crank it up a bit. So Drive does exactly what you'd expect it to. It's currently just a regular schmegler saturation plugin with four different saturation types. Here's B. The most aggressive one is C. Oof. Let's watch those levels. And type D, which is special. There's no drive applicable for it. Obviously, you can see it's grayed out here. But things get most interesting when we turn on the dynamics. That's the whole point of this plugin. So I'm going to crank up the saturation here. Right now, you notice everything's getting crispy. With the dynamics on, I'm going to pull down the threshold until I see it touching that wave. Now you're going to notice that snare pops. That kick's getting a little bit crunchy. Now you really hear the snap with an aggressive type like C. Let's see what A sounds like on the setting. Much more gentle. And if I turn this curve knob, the curve tells us how sensitive it is to the level of the signal. If I turn it really high, now everything's getting some juice. Let's get it on the aggressive setting. You'll notice almost everything's getting crunchy. Now it's really just the snare and the kick. But where things get even more aggressive than that, if we want to get a little wildly, we turn on the distortion. And this range is really going to change the drive. So if I turn the range all the way up, it's really turning the drive from here to here dynamically based on the level of the signal. And again, we're getting pretty aggressive here, pretty wild, but you can definitely hear it taking effect. Let's turn the plugin off. Really aggressive sound. We're gonna turn that down a bit. Now you're probably wondering what inverse is for. If I invert it, oh does the exact opposite. So the quieter the level, the overall level of the signal, the more distorted it gets. So you're going to notice that the kick and the snare aren't going to get crunched anymore, but all of the details in between get pumped. That sounds pretty full and beautiful. I wonder what it looks like when we print out when we print out this waveform. So I'm going to go ahead and normalize these real quick and compare. Wait. So oof, we've gone 0.5 in the LRA and a big difference in the LUF values. We've gotten four LUFs worth of information in between the cracks. But if you notice, those peaks aren't distorted. We're not clipping them and shaving them off because it's reacting dynamically to the level of the signal, right in between the cracks, basically. And we can change how much it's concerned with those things, how fast it moves on this, this knob down here. This knob is actually taking an RMS value over a moving window of either 60 milliseconds up to 1,000 milliseconds. I don't know why it goes that high, honestly. And I should also, by the time you download it, there will probably be a smaller marking for like 10 milliseconds. But let's see what happens if we move that knob a bit.
now that's taking a wider RMS, the overall level is going to look lower. So I'm going to push the threshold so it'll react a bit more. You can really feel like the drummer is moving backwards and forwards. Close, far away. Closer. The more kicks and snares you hear, the more it seems to back off. The sweet spot for me, depending on the tempo and the groove, is around 200. You feel just the right amount of pumping. But let's happen, see what happens if we turn off inverse. So now the kicks and the snares are really where the energy starts to pump. Now the only knob we haven't talked about is the curve knob. Now everything's gonna get pushed. Oh. And now it's very little amount of sensitivity. So only the highest level information within a 250 millisecond window is gonna get pushed. That's about what this is for. All of the main uses for this. You can feel it really feel pump. Notice how with inverse on you're gonna hear a lot of the hats. It's almost like the hats are being played a lot louder than the kick of the snare. Ah. But that's that's enough of the intentional uses. Why don't we see if we can break something? So I'm gonna go inverse and I'm gonna pull it all the way down. You'll notice that the spar gets gray or black when things aren't getting distorted. Now I'm gonna turn this drive all the way down, just like it was at the beginning, so it's almost silent when it's below that level. But when it's past, it'll pop up because the curve is so far down. Ah. You can get a little glitchy that way. Let's see what happens if we turn the millisecond count. And we'll have to adjust the threshold. Really snap. <laughs> At a high level, high RMS, I don't know if we can get the same effect. All right, let's talk about what this thing does not do though. Right now, I'm, I'm really intending to add a clipper at the end. It's really easy especially with this, to get a bunch of clipping. I might as well make it intentional, you know? And I can choose what type of clipping, or rather you guys can help me choose what type of clipping you want, or if you want some sort of, uh, something you can interpolate between, between like soft clipping and hard clipping. If there's anything else you feel like it needs, please let me know. Right now there's already, I know somebody's going to ask, it's saturation, so yes, there is an anti-aliasing filter. There's no oversampling, I may or may not add that in. Most of my viewers, are, I know you guys are Reaper users, so you have that built into your DAW anyway. But there may or may not be resampling, uh, oversampling rather. There already is an anti-aliasing filter. Let me know if you disagree with the way that I've implemented it. There will likely be a hard slash soft clipper added but if you guys please just just download it give it a try i mean it's free just if you have a few minutes in the windows computer it'd be awesome to hear any feedback you have or if you actually make something sick with it and find it very useful please let me know as well keep your eye out for the code walker through that's coming soon ish and i really appreciate you guys just listening through the video all the way through hope you guys enjoy it stay cool everyone